That's insane. Can't believe how well that just worked. All right, today we are looking at the new, well, newish OX64 single board computer by Pine64. So I have here the 128 uh, megabit version. It's important to note that this is 128 megabit, not megabyte. Uh, there is two variants of this. There's the version with 16 megabit, so two megabytes usable, or 128 uh, megabit, so eight megabytes usable, if I did that math right in my head, just divided by eight. Now, these are a competitor to the uh, Raspberry Pi Pico, and I think they do a very good job at it. They're both about $11 Australian. I just ordered two of them, and we're gonna flash them with Linux. This is what makes it interesting as well, though, is that, uh, let's see if I can get a bit closer. It's not gonna be focused. Um, I'll put some close-up pictures on there anyway, but what makes these interesting is they're very much like an STM32 or a uh, expressive like ESP32, that they're almost a, a MCU or an SOC, system on a chip. They're very small, very compact. They've got a lot of functionality built in, a lot of GPIO ports. However, what this and the Raspberry Pi Pico does, which is based on the RP2040, and this is based on the Buffalo Labs 808, is um, they are actually essentially still a full-fledged computer. This is running a RISC-V processor, which is a dual core up to, say, I think it was 480 megahertz. And you can run Linux on this. So normally you'd need a Raspberry uh, Pi Zero or Four or something like that. You can't run Linux really on a ESP32. Uh, I wish I'd, I should have had some here to show you, or on a STM32 like an F103 or something. They can run free RTOS, a uh, real-time operating system, which can do some very Linuxy things, but you're not booting a Linux kernel and getting a bash shell. This can do that, and it's in a form factor that is very tiny, obviously. So comparing them to each other, they're both $11 Australian, which is great. They're both the exact same size. They've both got very similar connectivity. They've got the same amount of GPOs. However, where Pine64 have smashed it is that you've got more RAM. So this has a 64 meg of RAM as opposed to a quarter of a meg of RAM, as I understand it, on the Raspberry Pi. Feel free, uh, the Pi Pico, sorry. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Also has more storage. This comes in in the 16, 16 uh, megabit or 128 megabit option, which is this SPI flash right here. And you can most likely swap that out yourself. But that's a hell of a lot more storage. Faster processor, so the uh, RP2040 is a Cortex M0 Plus chip at 130, 133 megahertz. This is a Buffalo Labs 808, which is, I believe it's got like two performance cores and two low power cores, if I recall correctly, something like that. And it's up to 480 megahertz, so it's a lot faster. It also supports Zigbee out of the box and uh, has USB 2 instead of USB 1.1. So I'm pretty excited about this. It does off the cuff seem less user friendly though. I've already had to mess around with that a little bit to try to figure out what's going on, such as what you can actually use this USB-C and micro USB ports for. Haven't really tried to use these JTAG ports yet because believe it or not, it isn't 2.54 mil spacing. Now, to flash this, you're gonna need a few things. You can't really just connect it straight away. I'm gonna use my, so I'm gonna to have to refocus that, aren't I? So I'm gonna be using my CP2104. There is quite a few different things you can use to flash it, and they've got different recommendations. So you can use a Pi Pico uh, running UART firmware and flash it with that. You can use uh, an ESP32 with a CP, CP210X, or you can use the CP210X itself. I've got the 2104, 2104, whatever you wanna call it. Um, you can use a Black Pill, which is an STM32F401 or 103. I get confused because there's so many rip-off versions of it. Uh, and then some random UART adapters do work, uh, like some of the CH series ones, or the, uh, which I think are prolific, or the um, FTDI ones, like the FT232 work. But I've had the best luck using this CP2104 with everything. So I'm gonna keep using that. Now, one of the things is I'm using two USB cables here. This one is just to power it. So I've got TX and RX connected here, and that is two pins, uh, what was that? If I look at the thing, so 14 and 15, which is UART zero. And then I'm creating a common ground here. It will get grounded to the same USB ground. However, being such long cables, I wanna make sure there's no issues with the serial connection and ground is very important. So I am then going to power it with this. Now, I can power it directly from here. Um, if I plug this in, we'll see it power up. If I get the right one and don't cook it, there we go. 
and it's online. The issue is every time I need to power cycle this, this disconnects from the computer for a moment, which means we lose our console session. So instead of that, I'm not gonna power it from there. I power it from here using another USB cable. In fact, let's swap these around. Plug that one in this side. I really hope this is all in focus. My lighting today isn't great. I've got to order some new lights. There we go. And so I will power it with this and it is quite happy doing that. Now, if we switch over to the computer, I'll start OBS recording and we'll have a look at essentially what the computer sees. First things first, you're going to want to connect to your serial port. Have a look at what number that is in device manager. Should also probably do that too, it's getting a bit warm. All right, so we've got COM4 here. And the interesting thing is uh, for most of these, you wanna connect at two million board, which I know is weird. Some of them seem to connect at uh, 115200, some at two million. And it depends as well because GPO 16 to 17, which is your kind of stood out or you are once you're in normal mode, um, seem to be at 115200. But this can also be highly dependent on which revision you get. So mine has a build date here of 2022-1018, 18th of October. Now, they are continually developing these. They're shipping them with newer firmware. Essentially, what this ships with now, though, is the default that is on that 808 chip. And they're not hugely user-friendly. They've created this minimum viable hardware product that seems to work absolutely perfectly, but not created a user environment for it. And they've left that up to the community. Pros and cons, I mean, that's kind of what Pine64 does. So no judgment there. But it does make it, for people that are a little bit newbie like me, it makes it a bit harder, which is why I'm gonna do this step through. So now we've got ground and those two GPOs connected as you can see there. Now, if I connect to that 2000 and power cycle it, you'll see the Booflo Lab boot and then it sits there saying ping and pong. You'll see that if we then hold down the boot function to put it into flashing mode, and power cycle it again, we just get this weird little output there. All right, now that I've got the software I need on here, we're gonna be using DevCube by Buffalo Labs. And this looks like the best way to get going. There's some instructions I'll link to below, which are from the OX64 wiki. Uh, it's where the community's been putting together a full Linux stack, and I've already flashed this SD card with the base part of it. But we'll launch this software Go to MCU, COM4, 2 million. Now let's go create and download. All groups are unused. What have I missed here? Ah, that's, uh, that's where I've got to be a little bit smarter and actually read the instructions and set those groups. So, look at that, shake hand success and it's flashing. That was a lot easier than what I thought. So I looked everywhere for instructions before even diving into this and it did not look that easy to get it to do anything. That is insane. All right, so next we then go to the IoT bit and enable single download, wherever that is, yeah. And we want address D2, 0xd2000. Now if we browse for this, we also have one more image. That's what I flashed the SD card with. This is the one that we wanna put uh, in this location. So then I go create and download again. Just do a good 20 seconds or so. Now this is loading a fair bit more data across. That's probably why they use the 2 million board rate, which is incredible, but that's awesome. It works, that gives us a lot more throughput, a lot less waiting. Here's a, um, a pin out as well. We're gonna have to refer to this a bit to move to pin 16 and 17, which are the input and output for the serial console. It's just doing the right check now, and then we'll have a look at the output. Excellent, that's theoretically done. Next step, so let's pull the power out. Let's stick our Linux image in, which is this SD card. If I can figure out how to, there we go get it in there so then what we want to do is move these two from 14 and 15 to 16 and 17 which are going to be on the other side and a bit further down 
I think, pardon me, there, there let's see. Nope, I was off by one, so very close. I accidentally pulled my ground connection there. So let's put that back on the third pin down on that side. Now, in theory, back on the computer, if we reopen putty, and we go back to that COM4, it's either gonna be two million or 11.5200. But, powering this up, open that, it should boot to flash, which should have our image, which then should load the OS from the SD card. That's insane. Can't believe how well that just worked. So this is gonna be the one slow thing, the first time it boots up, is it just resized the petition to take up the rest of our um, SD card. So I've got a random 32 gig in there, which is more than this thing would ever, ever need. I thought I had some crappy old like 32 meg cards. Uh, apparently not though. So using this one, the other thing that apparently is pretty awesome is how quickly these boot. So these boot as fast as an SOC or an MCU, like in sub one second. It's gonna boot a full Linux kernel in that time and have you at a prompt where you can start doing things. I find that amazing. So. Here we are at build root, OX64 login. I don't even know what the default login is, but I'm gonna show root and blank. Yep, there we go. So we can set a new password and make it OX64. Not too short, I oh, don't no, that worked. Um, proc CPU info, there we go. We're seeing one processor there. Doesn't give us any um, bogo mips, which is interesting, three minus M. We have our 64 meg with a bit of overheads RAM there. It's also enabled one gig of swap, which is probably very necessary. But this whole kernel is using nine meg of RAM, which is mental. Uh, nothing USB, nothing PCI. You can see there's a bit missing here. D message gives us pretty much the entire boot thing. We can see the bit going on here. Uh, is it showing any? All right, just the local interface. So if we then go, what's the last one? DF minus H, it shows there just our SD card that we've booted. And now let's pull the power and watch it boot again, because this is what I'm really curious about. Uh, there are different images that boot at different speeds and you can of course tune this to boot faster. You can turn off all sorts of features you don't want. Let's just see, ready? All right, so that boot was less than a second to start loading all of the user environment, and I'd say that was about four seconds flat, including starting NTPD, SSH, syncing the time, every or trying to, running DHCPD, everything like that. So I'm really impressed with that. Theoretically, there was no, yep, it kept our password change. And then we should be able to start doing things with this. We this should be able to start using Wi-Fi. There is a small antenna port on there. Uh, it's got Bluetooth and Zigbee. I'm probably gonna replace my Raspberry Pi Zero with this, because all it's doing is running Python turning GPOs on and off the controls relays. But this is a lot cheaper, a lot faster, a lot less power draw. Like this is gonna be running on a fart, basically. And I've, I might order a few more. Um, this is genuinely impressive. Well done, Pine64. So to reiterate, all we did is we connected to pins one and two, or GPO 14 and 15, which is TX and RX held boot as we plugged it in. That's going through our CP2104. We loaded the dev cube tool, selected 808, and we flashed the two groups, and then we flashed the main image. We used Balena Etcher, which I didn't record, to flash this SD card with the third image, and then we booted to it, and it works perfectly. It probably realistically could be done in about four minutes flat, and you have a full usable computer that's got networking capabilities, it's got ethernet coming out in the future apparently through a header, someone's probably gonna be able to hack that in. Same as mic, speaker, and camera module, looks like someone's gonna be adding that in, or there's you know the plans for a um, add-on module for that. It's very capable. If you've got any questions, if you wanna know if something can be done with it, I'm gonna keep one spare. I would recommend soldering the header pins on this side though, because it actually makes it nearly impossible to read the label of the GPIO pins there. But that's the OX64, a very capable single board computer that can run a full Linux kernel. So thank you very much for coming by. I apologize if anything here is slightly out of focus or if I got any details wrong.
If anyone knows why they're called Buffalo Labs, is that just how uh, maybe the manufacturer's uh, origin says or spells Buffalo? I don't know. But I'm gonna keep this video short. I might do another one when I find some interesting use for this or I start playing with these JTAG headers. They probably just go straight to pin 16 and 17, to be honest. I'll put all the links below to the wiki, to the GitHub where I got the images from, uh, all that sort of stuff. And don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the little bell if you want notifications and more. Leave me comments if you want to know anything. Flame me if you feel like it. Any sort of engagement is good engagement. Till then, enjoy the start to 2023. Look after yourselves. Stay safe. All the things supposed to say. I'll catch you next time.